It's Bible Club, it's Bible Club, it's Bible Club in your town. We're singing, we're laughing, let's get the word up from. Little guy out 
out there, he's a little short, little, and he, we make fun of him, right? Or he's trying to be funny. But he's representing somebody. 2,000 years ago, the Caesar ruled the whole world. Who rules the city of Gary? Does anybody know who's, who's the, the, the main person in the city of Gary? Do you remember her name? It's a lady. Remember who, who's the mayor? Who's the mayor of the city of Gary? We don't know. Remember Mayor Karen? Karen Freeman Wilson? Has she been to your schools or anything like that? No. Oh, okay. All right. Well, she's a nice lady. She is the main lady. There's other people that do their things, but she's the mayor of, of, uh, of Gary. And then other towns, they have a mayor there. Then our state has a governor, right? Our country has a president, right? Barack Obama. And in the old days, 2,000 years ago, there was a huge empire, even bigger than the United States of America. And the man that was in charge, his name was Caesar. Caesar, that was his title, and his name was Augustus. Now, he was in so much charge, it was like, now Barack Obama, sometimes he thinks he can just say something and people have to do it. But he can't do that, really. In America, he can't do that. But in the Roman Empire, Caesar Augustus, he could just say, I want this to be done, and everybody had to do it. And so, Caesar Augustus had thought of a new plan, and what he wanted to have done, and think about this, what he wanted to have done, he said, I want everybody, wherever their family is from, wherever their family is from, not where they live right now, but where their grandparents and their ancestors, where all their ancestors were from, I want them to go to that town and register. So he had his he had his uh, law written down, and he gave his gave that group, that law to his soldiers, and they had to go throughout the whole country and, and the whole empire. More than one country was in his empire. They had to go to the Greek country, to the Macedonian country, to the country of Turkey, to yep, to the Egypt, each, the country of Egypt, and he had to go to the country of Israel. And they went to the country of Israel and they said, they announced in all the city, Caesar says that everybody must figure out where their family is from and go to that city and register. So, they came to a city in Nazareth. Do you remember, do you remember from last week? There was two people that lived in Nazareth. Yeah. You remember who this lady was? No. The angel came to her? Well, she did. She gets a free baby. That's true. That might be one way to say it. What's her name? Mary. 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 Mary's her name, and she lives in Nazareth. And the angel came to her and said that even though she was never with any man, God would allow her to, to have a baby, and that baby would be Jesus. And then there was this Joseph. man. Joseph. Remember this man? Joseph. His name was Joseph. That's right. Joseph lived in Nazareth, and he was engaged to Mary, and he thought, she's going to have a baby, and she hasn't been with me. And then the angel came and said, this is a very special baby. This baby came from God. And so Joseph was honored to be able to take care of the baby, even though he wasn't his father. Who was the baby's father going to be? God. God, that's right. So these two people, they lived in Nazareth. But... There, they were both from the family of David. Does anybody remember David in, in, the, in the Bible? David fought against Goliath. Remember the story of David and Goliath? And David became a king. He was the king of Israel. And so they were both from the family of David. And David was from the city of Bethlehem. So when these men, these people, when the soldiers came to their town and said, you must go to the home of your ancestors... They lived in Nazareth. Where did they have to travel to to register? I just said it. Where was David from? No, these people were from Nazareth. Joseph was from Nazareth. They were from, they were from the family of David. And David was from... Want to try again? Israel. It was all in Israel. That was the country. Egypt. Egypt? No, no, not Egypt. 
Well, let me see if you remember something else. There's a Christmas song. Do you remember this picture from last week? When we had this picture, I told you about something that the prophets had said a long time, even before before Caesar Augustus was alive, five, six hundred years before Caesar Augustus was alive. The prophets said that God promised the people of Israel that a, a virgin, a, a woman, would have a baby, and that a son would be given, and, and he would be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. And then another prophet said that he would be born in the city of Bethlehem. Bethlehem. So, King David, his family was from Bethlehem. Okay? So, if Mary and Joseph are in Nazareth, and Caesar Augustus says you have to go to the city, to the town that your ancestors are from, where did they have to go? They were in Nazareth, and they had to go to their ancestors was from was King David. Where was King David from? Bethlehem. Okay. I thought I was not communicating for a while there. And so, I don't think I was. So, you might suggest. So Mary and Joseph, when they heard the law from Caesar Augustus, they thought, well, we're going to have to go there because he's the emperor. If you don't obey the emperor, you're going to be in big trouble. And I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure the emperor thought, I'm going to be able to, once I get everybody's name, I'm going to know where everybody is. I'm going to be able to send people after them and collect money from them, collect taxes from them. I'm going to see how many men there are in all these towns, and I'll be able to get men to be in my army so that my, my empire can be even stronger. I'm sure Caesar Augustus thought he was the most powerful person in the world at this time. He was making everybody go all over the place. Even Mary and Joseph had to travel for like 80 miles away. Now, that doesn't sound like far in a car, but do you see if they're on a car? There's no car. There was no cars back there. They might have had a donkey, and so a lot of people put them on a donkey, but they might have just been walking. How many of you have walked for 80 miles? I don't think so. Okay, 80 feet feels like a long way. And they had to, they had to get either with an animal for one of them or both of them to ride, or just with their own two feet. They had to travel for 80 miles. Everybody had to go all over. They had to figure out where their grandparents and their great-grandparents were the town where they were from, and they had to get back to that town and register. But who was making sure all this happened? Who made sure that happened? Okay, do you remember? What Mary, somebody came to Mary and said, you're going to have a baby. So Mary was expecting a baby. Who was that baby? Who was the baby that Mary was expecting? It was who? Jesus. Jesus. And God had said a long time before that Jesus would be born where? In Bethlehem. In Bethlehem. But Mary and Joseph, they lived where? In Nazareth, right? And so Caesar Augustus, was he doing what he wanted to do? Or was he doing what God wanted him to do? He didn't even know it, though, did he? He didn't love God. He didn't know God. But God wanted Mary and Joseph to be in Bethlehem. Because that's where he had promised to all the people that the Savior of the world, that Jesus would be born. So Joseph and Mary, they traveled down to Bethlehem, and Mary was expecting the baby. She could tell. They knew that it was going to come pretty soon. And so they got to Bethlehem, and they found a place to stay. Of course, they had, you know, they were, they were from that their, their great-grandparents, and maybe way before that was from Bethlehem, but they didn't really know anybody that they could stay with in town. So they had to stay in the inn. And the inn was like a hotel, but not like a hotel that we know about. Didn't have very many separate rooms. In fact, there was probably so many people there. Just a few people had rooms, and all the rest were in like a big area, and they just kind of had their spot where they would, you know, lay down at night. And so they were there at the inn, and they were staying there doing their stuff, registering with the uh, Roman Empire. And while they were there, while they were there, now where's there? What town are they in? Bethlehem, right. So while they were there in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to, for the baby to come. And there wasn't a place in the inn 
where they were. There wasn't a place in the inn to have a baby. So, because normally you go to, we would go to the hospital to have a baby, right? Well, they didn't have, they weren't, there, was, there wasn't a hospital around, and there wasn't anywhere private in the inn for them to have a baby. And so, they went somewhere else. It doesn't seem very private, but there must have been enough privacy because no one else was around. They went out to the stable. Now, does anybody know what a stable is? What's a, do you know what a stable is? No? Okay. You're just raising your hand. Okay. What is a stable? It's for animals. Yeah. It would be almost like, I mean, it would be kind of like going out to the garage. Okay. We live in our house and we keep our car in the garage. It's like well, a barn. It's like a barn. Yeah. Back in those days, they didn't have cars, but they lived in the house or they stayed in the inn and they kept their animals out in this stable. So because there was no place private in the inn for them to have their baby, they went out to the stable with all the animals. And the Bible says that Jesus was born in a stable and that Mary laid the little baby in a manger. Now a manger is a box where they would keep the food for the animals. How many has ever been on a farm? You've been on a farm? Have you seen the little box? You know when the animals are hungry, they put food in a certain spot for them? Okay, so they go there and the animals come there and they slobber all over that food, right? Yeah. And they eat all that? Well, they, I'm sure they tried to clean it out, but they kind of cleaned it out. And that is the little spot that they put little baby Jesus. The Bible says Mary laid him, he was in, a, in the stable, and he laid him in a manger. Or she laid him in a manger. And so, Jesus was born in a stable... And his first crib was the food box for some animals. Now, who was Jesus? God. He was God. That means he's greater than any king in the whole world. He's greater than every king that ever lived in the whole world. Now, if a king was having a baby, you think he would put him in an animal's food box when he was born? No. No. But God sent his son, Jesus. And he humbled himself so much that when Jesus was born, and he was greater than any king's son, when Jesus was born, he, they didn't, there wasn't even a place for him to have privacy to be born, except in the stable. And his mom, Mary, had to put him in a manger when he was born. Just a spot like that. A nicer place than any single one of us was born. We don't remember when we were born. But I tell you, we weren't put in, a, in an animal's food box when we were born. Jesus, Jesus was humiliated even more than us. And he was the son of God. Right? He didn't deserve that. But even way back then, people didn't know who he was. Did they? I'm sure the innkeeper, I mean, if he had known that the king's son was going to be born, he would have said to some of these other people, you know what, you have that room, let's, let's clear out of that room, we'll let, let these people be in this room. But he didn't know. He didn't know that Jesus was there. He just thought it was some woman that was having a baby. Not any more important than anyone else. And really, even today, a lot of people, they don't, they, they know at Christmas time, <laughs> But they don't really even hardly know about Christmas, do they? They think about Santa Claus and reindeer and stuff like that. And Santa Claus is funny. It's a little fun, but that's not what Christmas is about, is it? It's about what is Christmas is about? It's about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And it's more than just the baby Jesus. Because the baby Jesus was the son of God. God. And he grew, didn't he? And he became a man. He grew into being a man. And he never sinned. And then the people came along and hated him. And they killed him, even though he had never, ever sinned. But when they killed him, even though he had never sinned, he was still God. And he died so that on a cross. So that everybody that would turn from themselves and turn to him and trust Him, they could have their sins forgiven, and every one of us are sinners. Jesus' birth 
and his death and his resurrection makes it possible for all of us to have eternal life with God. But you can't do that. You can't have eternal life just because of what he did. We have to turn to him for that salvation. All right, so next week, we're going to see what happened after he was born. Some of you probably already know, but you would think the whole world should know about this little baby that was born. And when he was born, who knew that he was born? Who knew that he was born when he was born? Mary knew, right? Of course, Mary knew. And Joseph knew. And that's all. That's all the people that knew. Because he was out in the stable, right? Laying in a manger. But do you think God wanted people to know that he was born? Sure did. And next week we're going to see how God let people know that Jesus was born.